Joe Marine, our CBS News correspondent based in Chicago, is just back from this part of New York City. Carol? Dan, I think I was in the second collapse or uh, an explosion right after that because I was trying to make my way around Stuyvesant High School. I believe that's correct. I'm not a New Yorker. But I was coming um, toward the World Trade Center looking for CBS crews and asked a firefighter if I, he saw any. He told me to walk down the middle of the road. All of a sudden, there was a roll, an explosion, and we could see coming at us a ball of flame stories high. He and others screamed, run, and I ran. Uh, I fell. One of them picked me up. We ran as fast as we could, and then he threw me into the wall of a building and covered me. Forgive me. I am, in his, I am in his debt. You know, Dan, I know firefighters do incredible work all of the time, but this was exceeded anything that I can imagine. He threw me into a wall, covered me with his body. Uh, I could feel his heart banging against my back. We were both so sure we were going to die. The flame somehow stopped short of us. But whatever collapsed created, and you saw it in some of that video, Dan, a rain of cinders so thick that you couldn't see this far in front of you and you couldn't breathe. A police officer, and I wish I knew the firefighter's name, a police officer by the name of Brendan Duke grabbed my hand and he and I tried to find our way through it until we could hit a clearing in the light. What you're seeing on the ground here, Dan, was in the air and, um, and you couldn't see. And again, we thought we were finished. We somehow got to the light Another firefighter gave me his mask for a moment so I could breathe. And then I made my way somehow through the smoke into the light to our crews. Um, there was a cameraman there whose head was bloody and he was trying to shoot and set up some of these shots there. Um, the firefighters, the police, the crews, the people. People streamed toward me as I made my way to the Trade Center, sobbing and crying and trying to call home on dead cell phones, but they couldn't get through. Um, there is so much fear out there even now because of gas main leaks. There was a point at which I watched firefighters run. Someone threw me forward. Um, a paramedic truck let me jump inside and drove me halfway. And then a New York City bus driver opened his doors of an empty bus and drove me here to the broadcast center. Um, to all of them, I mean, citizens of New York and, and uh, have remained amazingly calm but deeply frightened. CBS News correspondent Carol Marine, still covered with the smoke and pieces of the debris. Stick with us here, Carol. I want to repeat that New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani now says, and this is a direct quote, there have been a tremendous number of lives lost. Certainly no one at this early hour can know how many lives have been lost. But it's impossible to watch the pictures of both of the World Trade Centers collapsing. Keep in mind these buildings were 110 stories in height each, with 50,000 plus people generally working there on a weekday, which this of course is. So when the mayor of New York says there's been a tremendous number of lives lost, there's no question that it is true. Carol Marine, did you see any bodies? Did you see? anyone that you said to yourself, that person is dead? I saw people on stretchers that I was certain were dead. I saw uh, firefighters and paramedics going into buildings where they themselves had to wonder if they were coming out. But there were um, a surprising number of people ambulatory and making their way out. I saw much more of that than I saw actual carnage. The concern that I heard from police and fire was that the people who were dead didn't make their way out of those towers, that most of the death is contained within those buildings.